So here we're going to go over a brief overview of what happens during lipid catabolism, what the overall goal is, and what our components are. So when we talk about lipid catabolism, obviously, first of all, we're talking about lipids. And what are lipids made up of? Essentially, they're made up of fats and glycerol. And the simplest form in which we can store lipids is by taking a glycerol. So this is the structure of glycerol over here. And taking any fatty acid and then adding fatty acids to these three hydroxyl groups and the end product we get is a triacyl glycerol. Now let's break this down even further. First of all, we have to have an understanding of what a fatty acid is. So a fatty acid is a, so if I draw out a fatty acid, so essentially this is just the overview structure, but we always have a carboxyl group. That's why it's called an acid, because it has that carboxyl group. And it just has this long um, hydrocarbon chain. Now, this long hydrocarbon chain, obviously, is going to be hydrophobic. Now, if we take a look, and uh, fatty acids can have, so there's many different types of fatty acids, and it, it all depends on how many uh, carbons you have, uh, how many saturated bonds you have, whether you're saturated or unsaturated. But that's essentially what a fatty acid is. Now, when we talk about glycerol, glycerol is a three carbon molecule and on each of the three carbons there is a hydroxyl group so when a fatty acid comes and binds to a glycerol essentially it's going to bind at that hydroxyl group over there so when this fatty acid it comes in the first carbon on the fatty acid it comes in and binds to a hydroxyl we see this form right here so we can see this is the double bond right over here and this OH and this oxygen is coming from that OH so in the process we're actually going to lose an oxygen and that oxygen is going to be lost um, and we're also going to lose a hydrogen and those oxygens and hydrogens are lost as water when we're forming a triacylglycerol this bond that forms right over here so right here in between that fatty acid and the glycerol is called the ester bond so essentially, fatty acids and glycerols, when they form a bond together, that bond is called an ester bond. So we can see over here that we actually have three ester bonds going on. So that's the basics that we have to understand, that triacylglycerols are made up of fatty acids, and they're called acids because they have this carboxyl group. And it's made up of glycerol, and glycerol is a three-carbon molecule, and it has three hydroxyls. And this is just a general structure of a triacyl glycerol, oh, glycerol. This R1, R2, R3 simply means that we can have whatever uh, hydrocarbon chain. So we can have uh, this many carbons. We could have like double bonds going on. Um, we could even be cis double bonds. Uh, so these R1, R2, and R3 could be anything. Another thing to make note of is that we also have glycerophospholipids in which we will actually have see there's an error right over here we will actually see a phosphate o minus o minus so we'll actually see a phosphate head we'll actually see a phosphate head on this carbon over here so instead of going back over here we had three fatty acids on each of the carbons of glycerol here we have two fatty acids and on this carbon of glycerol we actually have a phosphate and this R represents any head group that that phosphate is going to have now glycerophospholipids or triacylglycerols in order to break them down in order for our body to break them down and utilize those fats for energy first of all we have to have some enzymes that are going to break these ester bonds so we can separate glycerol and fatty acids so we want to break down the triacyl glycerols into their respective components so we have these four enzymes phospholipase c d one and two now the way that i like to remember these is that first of all these two c and d apply to this phosphate over here and one and two are going to apply to the fatty acids Phospholipase C, it comes first in the alphabet, so it's going to cleave this bond right over here. 
phospholipase base D is second in the alphabet, so it's going to cleave this bond over here. So I just remember the order of the alphabet, the order in which, so it's over here and over here. But let's take a closer look at where these bonds are being broken. So, but, so this is our original glycerol. Our original gl glycerol has these oxygens that used to be these hydroxyls. We want to regenerate those hydroxyls, so we're going to break this bond over here. When we break that bond, we're breaking the bond between the phosphate and the glycerol. This bond is broken by phospholipase C. Now, this phosphate, it has a head group. That could be any type of head group. Essentially, it's just another molecule bound to that phosphate. And we want to separate the phosphate and this respective head group. We use phospholipase D. Now let's look at 1 and 2, phospholipase 1 and 2. So the way we can remember this is that this is carbon number 2. So in order to break the bond between this fatty acid uh, and the glycerol oxygen, you want to break this ester bond right over here. You're going to use phospholipase 2 because we're talking about carbon number one, uh, carbon number two. Now, the last carbon we have left, uh, we wanna break this fatty acid uh, with the, the glycerol, so we're gonna break this ester bond and we're gonna use five phospholipase number one. And that's the way we can remember um, which enzyme is responsible for breaking down what. Now, once we get this uh, glycerophospholipid or a triacyl glycerol broken down into their respective components, such as glycerol, and fatty acids, we can use glycerol and the fatty acids to generate energy. And we'll get into that later of how that energy is produced. But first we need to understand that in our body, lipids are stored in adipocytes. So adipocytes are just specialized cells that are going to store these fats. Um, so when the body requires energy from these fats, so whenever we have low glucose levels and we have to resort to alternative resources, our body is going to turn to breaking down those fats. And essentially a signal cascade is a signal cascade is going to happen. And the result of that signal cascade is the breakdown of triacylglycerol into its components of glycerol and fatty acid. And we'll get into that later. But essentially, if this is our adipocyte, we have a signal cascade reaction. So we know we have our G-coupled receptor, it gets that hormone, G-protein released, um, it activates adenylene cyclase, so forth, so forth. But we have this signal transduction pathway, and glycerol gets broken, triacylglycerol, so gets broken down into its components of glycerol and fatty acid. So these two molecules will travel through the bloodstream, and they're going to reach our myocyte, because for just as an example, it's going to reach the myocyte. Let's say the myocyte needs that energy. So when it reaches the myocyte, uh, it's going to be in the cytoplasm of the myocyte, then it's going to enter the mitochondria, and that's where we're, going to, where we're going to see that major energy release or energy production. It's going to be through beta oxidation in the mitochondria. But that's just a general overview of uh, lipid catabolism. So we just need to understand the basics, first of all. What are fatty acids? They're long, aliphatic, amphipathic chain, chains. So remember, if this is our um, fatty acid. It has a long hydrocarbon chain, which is going to be hydrophobic, but it also has this group over here, which makes it, makes it an acid, that carboxyl group. So it's polar on this end, but then it's nonpolar on this end. And then glycerol, three carbon molecule, three hydroxyls. We can have glycerophospholipids. We can have triacyl glycerols. We break them down through various lipase enzymes, and lipids are stored in the adipocytes, and we break them down in the adipocytes to their respective components, and then we send them wherever they're needed in order to produce energy.